What up, Internet World? It's your boy Justin D. Live. I'm here with the boy Diggy Simmons. Yes, sir. Goodfellow Radio Hip Hop Series. Let's go. Do you do it for the love? Or is it for the satisfaction? Or maybe for the fame? Yeah, lights, camera, action. Do you live for the moment? Yeah, is it everlasting? Tell me what's it all for? Tell me what's it all for? Tell me what's it all for? Yeah, I mean, you see a lot of dudes these days always just worrying about the fame and the fortune and what comes with the life. But I'm here for a different reason. Definitely, I mean, you talking about like the blogs and the comments and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, they, they call them the, the, the blog games. You know, they got rowdy on the blog and you're like, they're behind the computer, all mad, whatever, or they feel accomplished. Or five exclamation points, you know, whatever. and you know they're really angry. Whatever. That like you're like, wow, he must be, he must have a gun. I mean, <laughs> behind the desk. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I guess you know you're doing something right when you, you know get a certain amount of comments, you know, just people loving and hating. You know what I'm saying? Like some people don't even get comments, and some people don't even get recognition. You know, so I'm thankful. You know, either way. Of course, you feel, you know, you feel some type of way, like, you know, but a lot of it is stuff, like, it's repetition, like, is that a, so I'm just like, is there, is there one notion that you wish to kill, like, 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 this one question that was asking is that, just, there's a lot to kill, I write my own rhymes, you write some rhymes, I write my own rhymes, we're tweeting this right now, Ashes, <laughs> I write, I write, I write all my music. So, so the people that say that who's his ghostwriter or whatever, I don't have a ghostwriter. I write for myself. Now you know what? It's funny you say that as a rapper. That must be the ultimate compliment. Cause that's when someone's true. doing that thing, it's like, oh, true. now you think I got a ghostwriter? Because if you whack, you whack. Like, that's true. There's a couple dudes I can name. People like he definitely wrote that. At this point in my career, a lot of, a lot of people don't think I write it. And I guess I've thought of it as a compliment before, but I don't really take it in like that. Think about it, because if you was black, and there are a lot of black cats out there. Like people, people would automatically, I'm not saying I'm good or anything. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with you know, the, the, way, you know, the way I'm going and what I'm doing. But you know, it's, it's definitely a compliment. The mixtape's out. Yes, sir. Released in November, if I'm not mistaken? December, early December. Okay. Now, we're in March. We're in March right now, yes. The progress since the mixtape has released to right now, from the outside looking in, has been immense. Yes, sir. It, it, it almost went from like, <coughs> hey, Diggy's rapping. So, holy shit, it's kicking rap. Yeah. How has that been for you, that change to where you were at then and where you're at now? I mean, since then, it's been good, you know what I'm saying? Like, as soon as I released the first track, which was the first flight prequel, mm -hmm. and, you know, a couple of people heard it, and then, Weeks later, I did the second leak off of the mixtape, second and last leak, which is points approved. And many people heard it, you know, embraced it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, Diggy's nice. And that's when everybody was like, you know, Diggy's rapping now. Now when the mixtape dropped, you got a good buzz, you know, pretty pretty good buzz and whatnot. You know, just since then, been releasing tracks. And, you know, the progress, you know, has just been great from, you know, just what people, people embracing it more, just me as an artist and not Diggy from Ron's house. And, what they normally know me from, Pops, Uncle, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, you don't have to necessarily follow the way that your parents, you know, guide you. Mm -hmm. My parents didn't teach me to be more mature. I guess it's just a characteristic that I, I normally have. So I guess it's just something that carries on past just my personality, it carries on through the beats I pick. You know, maybe some are a little bit more you know, like real hip hop 90s type of beats, you know, a lot of people, you know, like, yo, the way he picks beats are real mature. So I guess it just carries through the flow, carries through, you know, the metaphors, punchlines, just everything you know, in the music, you know, past that, fashion sense, all that. And then about like a year, year or so, you know, I was just writing acapellas to, you know, relevant instrumentals that were out. And then I just, you know, I was like, you know, so I started recording, recording on GarageBand, just like on my computer, like yeah. just sending it to my boys and whatever, yo, hop on this, and they do it on their GarageBand. Yeah. And then I released a freestyle that she don't want a man by Carrie Hilson and Asher Roth, and then, you know, that got out. And, you 
know, I decided to put together a mixtape, and you know, this is what I, this is what I really want to do. Many people are like, yo, is this, a, is this a hobby, you know? And I'm like, no, 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 like, this is what I take seriously, this is what I hustle for, you know what I'm saying? This is past everything you see, Run's house, all that. Like, condemn it before they can even say it. In the comments, on the blogs, and just everything, you know what I'm saying? Before people could even say it in their mind. You know, just address everything, put everything out on the table. Yo, I'm not taking help from my pops. I'm doing this independently on my own. I'm grinding. You know what I'm saying? Just like that, before anybody could even address it. And, you know, when you hit when you hit a certain point in your career, it's gonna be like, okay, I know you got the blog going on, you got the clothing line going yes. on, you got a lot of other projects that you're doing. You're only 14 years old, and I'm sure you still have about 18 hours of school to give. You know? Yes, sir. So, at what point, you know, do you make that decision to either continue to go even harder or uh, you know, to, to take it in another direction? I mean, I'm going hard now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, it's, it's not a hobby. Like, this is what I take real, real seriously. So, you know, I mean, I guess it's just going to continue, you know, maybe by the year, you know, just keep going harder and harder and harder as I progress. And it just seems like, you know, it is what it is, you know, like even by the day, you know, when I write, it makes me want to, you know, just, you know motivation, you know, to go harder just by each day. The tracks I release, you know, when I write in the studio, you know. To my knowledge, the project was fully produced. By, by, by non mainstream production, correct? Yes, sir. Um, majority was um, a lot of cats that we have good relationships with, like, likewise yourself, Nico, yes, um, Young Jers, and excuse me, I'm missing like, a, a couple cats, but I know there are a lot of, like, I wouldn't say internet, but dudes that I have you on know, in the blog experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how do those relationships come about? And, and, and that's very Jersey. It's very Jersey. Um, After Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nico and Young Jers, yeah, they rep Jersey. Um, who produced most of the you know tracks and the mixtape was Black the Beast, okay, yeah. which is out of Harlem. He did uh, six out of the twelve, okay. I believe it was like twelve. So he did six out of the twelve, and I connected with him through my brother, and uh, you know we just connected whatever through Twitter, and you know we got it popping from there. You know he did a lot of the production, and same thing with you know Young Jers, and I met Young Jers, and he introduced me to Nico. And then uh, who else produced? Natural Disaster, which actually did turn my swag on a soldier boy. But I met him through a friend of mine, Darnell. And, uh, you know, it's just connections and relationships. A lot of people just say stupid stuff like, I wonder how much that costs rent. I'm like, come on, son, I did this on my own. Like, come on, son. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess it's hard for people to believe that because they see how I was on, you know, Rent's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess I was portrayed as spoiled. I don't, I don't well, I mean, granted, you know. Or young, you know, even, so it's like almost hard, like, you see I'm doing a mixtape, you see that I'm doing music, of course, <coughs> for Russell, and, you know, Rev Ron is helping him, that's not the case, you know. In the car, in the back of the car, everybody know who I be. In the back of the car, in the back of the car, in the back of the car, yeah, that's where you can find me.